Today, I'm going to show you how to make a completely free, really easy to make club logo. Club logos are something that really helps you stand out from the rest of the crowd and they help, you know, kind of identify who you are as a club. Right, so whenever you see a club's logo, you'll instantly get to recognize, oh, that's Terrific Tigers, oh, that's Saturn Mains, oh, that's Pink Queen's Legacy. So having the club logo is a really important factor of your club, but at the same time, a lot of new club owners don't know where to get a logo from. So maybe they can't pay the commission prices or they don't have Instagram and they can't commission an artist off of Instagram. So this tutorial is gonna be a really easy way to do it by yourself. So the first thing we need to do is make sure you get your club horse. We are actually going to recreate the club logo that I made for my fake club or team. I don't even know what it is at this point. Lavender hooves. And so I am using the Palomino Lusitano and we are going to make our way to the riding arena. So in the riding arena, they have this really nice big white wall. And this white wall is going to help us when we use the next tool that we're going to use. So. Let's go ahead and I'm going to position my horse kind of this way so I can get a sort of a three quarter angle so that way I see both the front of the horse's face and the side of it. Let's go ahead now and go into the settings. So I press my escape key and then I go into the creative tab. So next what we need to do is we need to scroll all the way down here so that way we can find the hide. Let's see, we are going to hide the player, right? Oh yes, so become a wild horse. Okay, so when you click that, then it's just your horse by yourself. Okay, let's press O and we'll go into photo mode. And now I'm going to click and drag so that my camera kind of focuses in the space that I want. Okay, so I'm going to left click and drag to move left, left and right and up and down. And then my right mouse button that is going to move the camera around to different angles. So I'm going to leave my camera angle right about there. Okay, and so then I use my field of view to zoom all the way in because if you leave the, the camera here and you try to zoom in on the picture here, um, when you create the logo, it will actually make it very blurry. So make sure you zoom all the way in with the field of view and then use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in even further. Okay, so this is about as far as I can go. And then we'll click the take the photo button and there we go so we'll start off with this and then let's head over to the next tool that is going to help us remove this background from the horse so next we are going to want to search for the website called remove.bg and we'll click on the first website here remove.bg so this is a free website that allows you to remove the background from any image so click upload image and it should take you to your screenshots here. So make sure you find your Star Stable Online screenshots folder. And these are all pictures of my club members. Let's click on the photo of our golden Lusitano here. Click open. All right, so it did remove the background perfectly, but let's just double check. I like to click the edit button right here. Then I click on color change it to purple and I just look around the, the horse's neck and the nose and stuff like that and I just go around and make sure that the background remover removed up BG it didn't make a mistake and accidentally crop out something that it wasn't supposed to so it looks like both ears are here the mane looks correct the nose and the neck is fine so then what I need to do is I need to go back and click this checkerboard right there I'll go ahead and zoom out and we're gonna click download download image and there you go. So that was our first free tool that we used. Again, it didn't cost anything. So now we're going to go over to our next tool, which is Canva. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have used Canva, but it's very, very useful for making logos. Here we are on canva.com. You will need to sign up for an account, but the account is free. As you can see right here, it says free. So what we need to do next is hit create a design in the top right corner. And we're going to create custom size. So for custom size, what I'm going to use is 1080, okay, for my width. And then same thing here, 1080. And make sure this is in pixels, so PX, create new design. Now that we have our canvas, let's create our background color. So what we could do is click on the canvas here, and we'll click on this rainbow icon. We could use one of the solid colors that they give us, or if you scroll down, 
you could use a gradient. But for now, we're going to use our own gradient and I'll show you how to create that. So I'm gonna press on the white icon right here to create, uh, basically to erase my canvas. Let's click on the elements tab right here. And we're gonna use the search bar to search for gradient. Click on the graphics tab. You want to scroll until you find this one. This one in particular is nice because you can edit and change the colors that you have. Before we do that though, we need to click and drag this up into the corner. So you notice these pink lines are showing up and this is what's called snapping and this helps guide you into you know perfect symmetry and things like that. So I'm gonna click and drag this until it reaches the exact upper left corner. And then I will click and drag this corner handle until it reaches the middle again like that. So I need to start off by choosing the colors that I want. So I want a light purple and a dark purple for my gradient. So my light purple is going to be in the middle where this green is going to be. And my dark purple is going to be on this upper corner where this current light purple is. So let's click on the gradient again. And let's click on the green right here. So make sure you're selecting your green color right here. And we're going to actually use this lavender color that they already gave us as my very first color. So then I need to click on the second, um, actually no, this pink, because the pink is in the middle of this original gradient. So I need to click on the pink and that's gonna be my sort of medium purple. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna use this default one. And then this purple represents this corner right here. So I click on that one and then I change it to the dark purple. Great, so we have our purple gradient. So the next thing we need to do is create this gradient in the rest of the square. So I need to click on the gradient, hit control C and then control V. And that creates a copy of this square. Remember how I said I wanted my light purple to be in the middle? Well, if this corner represents the middle here, we need to actually flip this gradient around. So let's click the flip button right here and we'll just flip it until it's correct flip horizontal, there we go. Okay, so like I said, the corners, I want these corners here to be the dark purple and the middle is going to be my light purple. All right, so let's keep going here. So control C, control V, snap it into the corner, use the flip button to flip it into the correct position. That happened to be correct, there we go. Control C, control V one more time, snap it into the corner there and we'll flip it around a couple more times and there we go. All right, so that is our current gradient here. Now, sometimes Canva will do this thing where you'll see like the lines in between. So sometimes what you need to do is just zoom in and out and you'll see how sometimes it disappears, sometimes it doesn't. If I stay right there, it kind of goes away. What you can do is you can expand these a little bit like that. So that way they overlap each other the whole time. So I'm gonna actually do that right now just to make sure there is no lines. And there we go, that's that's okay. That's a pretty nice gradient here. So now what we need to do is we are going to left click and drag all of these. Okay, so you notice it creates this big selection and we're gonna press group. So now this whole thing becomes one kind of image. All right, so let's control Z and put that back. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this selection and I'm gonna click lock or hold on, lock, there we go, up here. There we go, so that way I can no longer move this around, so I can't move any of the purple around. And let's click on our upload, and we're gonna add our horse into the photo here. So, uh, upload, upload files, you can see I've already uploaded this a couple of times, but if you upload file, go to your downloads folder and then click on the remove.bg preview that we created. And then we'll click on this. All right, so let's close this window here. Now, if I zoom in on this and make this bigger, you'll notice that it's starting to look a lot like a logo. But if I click out of it like that, it will disappear. That's very strange, right? So we need to click on this button here called position and make sure you go to the layers tab. So you have arrange and then layers. Then click on detach image from background. Okay, and that should allow you to use the photo again. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm just gonna zoom in on this photo where I need to. I can actually crop in this photo because I don't need all of this extra space, right? So I'm gonna crop it right there and probably crop it right here. 
Okay, I'm gonna keep going until I think I'm ready. And let's crop out the space above. And there we go. That's what I have so far. So I also want to keep this space open here. Uh, so that way I can put my club's initials. The next thing we need to do is edit the photo a little bit. Just sharpen it. Make it nice and clear. So click edit photo. Make sure you click on the photo. Then go to adjust. Scroll all the way down until you get to the sharpness button. And we're going to change this into 50. So I don't know if you could tell, it did kind of make the photo have a little bit more contrast. And that's what we want. We want to make this very easy to see when the logo is very small. So I like to do this where I zoom out from the picture and see, am I able to see clearly what this horse is? So let's zoom back in so we can work on the project. Next, we are going to add a little circular ring. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my elements, click on circle this time. I mean, uh, look for a circle. Uh, we should be in the graphics tab still. So I'll start with this circle because it's nice and easy to use. Let's start by clicking and dragging this circle up into the left hand corner here again until it snaps into the corner and then make it as big as the entire square. Okay, so the entire square is all the way out here. So I'm just going to make this circle full size here. Good. So my horse happens to be totally in this circle here. Let's change it to a different color just because this black doesn't really fit. I'm going to change it to white for now. All right. There we go. Let's see if we can look for another circle. What I like to do is I like to have like one big circle on the outside and then another circle on the inside. All right, so I'm gonna choose this circle here. You wanna make sure also too, if you're using a free account, um, make sure to grab a free icon. All right, so I'm gonna click and drag this up into the corner, but I also wanna just quickly change it to a slightly different color just so I can see it better. Uh, so let's change it to this turquoise for now. All right, so I've clicked and dragged it so that it's now the same size as the canvas, but it kind of looks a little strange. So I actually like to make the circle a little bit smaller so that it fits inside of the logo here. And then you want to position it. Oh, let's actually change it to light blue. There you go. You guys can see that better now. We're going to click and drag this new icon so that way it's in the middle. So you notice how the pink lines, they create a little cross in the middle. So that way now you know this is perfectly centered in the middle. All right. So I am going to change this to white for now. You don't have to do two circles. You could do one circle. You could do like three circles if you really wanted to. But this again just kind of helps you create the eventual circular logo because right now this is still a square. So once again, I recommend zooming out to make sure you can still see clearly what this horse looks like. Okay, so um, the reason I say that is because when you're on Instagram, the Instagram logo is very, very small. So if your horse is really small or if your text is too small, no one is gonna recognize that. So you wanna make it as recognizable as possible by making it as big as possible. All right, so now what we need to do is add our club initials. So click on the text icon right here, click add a heading. It'll give you a tool, um, a text box to start working with. I'm going to start off with L for lavender. And then I'm going to use this little handle right here and click and drag it over here. Make this really big, like almost as big as like this space here. Okay, so I'm going to put my L right about there. Then I'm going to change the font into something that I something that I like, but something still readable. So for example, if I use this sort of cursive font right here, and let's actually just kind of make it like a little bit smaller right about there, just for demonstration purposes, if I zoom out, um, I might not be able to tell what that is. But if I changed it to another font like Anton, and once again, I make it nice and big like that, just so again, for demonstration purposes, if I zoom out, boom, you should still be able to tell that that is the letter L. So you want to pick a font that can be easily read from a distance. Okay, so something like this Anton font or maybe this Aperture font looks pretty cool. But again, pick something that you like. Okay, so maybe let's pick this Barbara font. Okay, again, I'm going to position that right about there. And that is my L so far. Okay, 
So black doesn't really quite fit in with this whole gold and white and cream color that we have here. So let's go ahead and change the color here. Uh, I'm going to turn this into a white. There we go. But then the L starts to kind of blend in with the rest of our border here. So I'm going to click Control C, Control V. And then I'm going to change this one to black. Click Position, uh, Arrange, and then send it backwards. Okay, so now we have a little drop shadow. Okay, so I'm going to adjust that a little bit right there. There we go. So I'm going to click on my white L and I'm going to click on Effects. Let's click Outline. And then change the color here to black. Alright, so now we have a border around the L as well as a drop shadow. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and add our H and we'll do the same exact process. I'm going to hit Control C, Control V. And we already have our L here, so we're just going to change it to H, capital H. Let's actually make you a little bit smaller. And we'll move you into a nice position here. You can use your arrow keys on your keyboard to do just teeny tiny nudges. I'm actually going to make this whole L situation a little bit smaller as well, just so that everything looks nice and pristine and sized correctly. So let's change the effects once again to none in this case. Okay. So yeah, as you can see, it's kind of a learning process to figure out what you need. Position backwards, there we go. So now that L looks a little better and it gives more space for the H. All right, so here is my H, effects, none, change the color to black, position, backward. All right, double check your logo again, zoom out. Can you still read LH? Yes. Right, so that's a good thing. If you can still read it when it's really, really small, that's a good thing. All right, so the final little touch is I like to add um, a little icon just to kind of show off what this club is about. Um, in the Emerald Hunters logo, we don't have that, but in the Lavender Hooves logo, we are. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on the Elements tab here. We're gonna search for a cupcake. <laughs> So this cupcake, it just represents that this club is a baking themed club. So I'm going to just press on this one right here. Now what we need to do, you notice how the cupcake is behind the LH, but it's in front of the horse. So let's click position. We're going to click it, uh, click this forward, or you can click to front. It's up to you. And let's make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so that it fits right, right about there. There we go. But it kind of is competing a little bit. Like your attention, you don't know where to look. Are we supposed to look at the horse or the cupcake? So what I like to do is I actually like to click on the image, click these ch this checkerboard icon right here for transparency. And then let's put this down until uh, about 55 or so. 50 or so. Yeah. That way you can still see the cupcake, but your eye is supposed to be looking at the horse. Okay, let's zoom out again. Really make sure you can see all of this stuff. Okay, so you get the horse, you get the LH, and you get a little bit of the, the cupcake there. And there we go. Our logo is almost ready. We have one final step that we need to do. So we need to click the share icon. Then we need to click download and leave it as PNG. Then click download. Okay, so give it a minute. The last step that we need to do is basically just get rid of these corners right here and turn this into a circle. So we are going to move into a program called GIMP and this program is completely free to use. So let's go ahead and actually open our photo. So I'm gonna use my file folder down here. By the way, this is Connor from Detroit Become Human if you ever wonder who that is. <laughs> so click on my downloads folder. I'm going to right click. You need to have GIMP installed on your computer beforehand before you can do this step. But anyway, so I click on my logo here. Then I'm going to look for open with GIMP. So this will just automatically open it instead of me having to open GIMP the program and then finding the file. It just automatically opens it in the program. Okay, so here we are in the editing program. It looks a little bit scary, but what you need to do is you need to find the paths tool. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like on my computer. It might look different for you. So this is the paths tool. Click on that. 
I'm going to hit my control key and scroll up with my mouse and then come down here to the corner. There's this little icon right here that says navigate the image display and that's going to allow you to go down all the way to the corner here. I'm going to click and drag until I'm all the way down here. Okay, there we go. All right. So the first thing is our starting point. So our starting point is going to be right here. So I'm going to left click all around the image like this. And we're going to go corner by corner. So we're going to get rid of the horse's, um, horse's elbow right here. Okay, so I can go all the way around. And I'm going to go all the way up until this kind of middle point right here. And once again, you're just going to click on the outside of the circle here. So you can hit Control Z to undo a point if you don't like where you clicked it. You can click and drag the handles kind of like that to make it a perfect curve. I don't like doing that just because it takes too long. And if you do it well enough, just clicking individually, it should still look like a circle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And I'll start off with this first corner. And then all you have to do, once I show you the step to delete it, you will just repeat it on all of the other four corners. Okay, so keep clicking and dragging and moving your uh, canvas around so you can see where you're going. Okay. So click this again to drag the frame. And I'm going to control and scroll up even more right here just so I'm really precise. So this point right here, this was my starting point. I'm going to click one more time and then I'm going to click inside of this first point here. Okay, so let's control and scroll down to zoom out. Okay, right about there. Now I'm going to press my enter key and what's going to happen is it will create a selection. So press enter. So now you see the, the line here is kind of animated like this. So all you need to do now is press your delete. Okay, so for me, my delete key is on my laptop. Um, so yeah, once you see that, you should see this gray checkerboard icon and that means the background is gone. And that's a good thing. We need to go up here and click select none. And then click on, I'm gonna click on my move tool right here just because it gets rid of the paths that we had. And there we go. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on all of the other corners. I'll demonstrate it slowly one more time just so you can see, and then we'll do a speed through. Okay, so I'm going to start off by hitting my control key, scroll up with my mouse, right until about here where the purple meets the edge of the square. Click on the paths tool. I'm going to start right about there and slowly make my way around the edge. And you, as you can see, I'm clicking outside of the canvas here just so I can travel around the corner without having to, you know, go super far or anything like that. All right, so control zoom in again. Left click all the way around the border. Be careful because sometimes what can happen is you can click like that and oh no, that's not going to work. So just control Z if you make a mistake. Go slowly. It's better to go slowly and undo it rather than going too quickly and then you can't fix it. So go slowly. Click, click, click like that. Okay, move my can canvas. Oops, control Z. See what I mean about making mistakes? It's better to make a mistake and fix it right away than making a mistake and uh, fixing it too late. Keep going. The more of these dots that you make, like the... Like if you... The more of these dots that you make, the more circular it's gonna look actually. So it's better to put a lot of, like, a lot of individual dots rather than a dot with a big space in between. Because again, that will help it make it look more circular rather than like, oh, it's a jagged edge, you know? All right, so control zoom in again, just to make sure I click exactly into this last point right here, which was my starting point. Okay, click right.
Okay, so I clicked it. Let's click enter. Uh, my enter key, and then this is what in the I think the industry calls it marching ants animation kind of thing that tells you you selected something. So then click your delete button, and you should get the gray checkerboard. Hit select none. Click on the move tool. Yeah, I think you can click on any tool just to get rid of the path tool. But there you go. All right, so let's do this two more times, and then our logo is almost ready. Okay, there we go. We have completed our logo. Uh, so the next thing that we need to do is basically just export it. So let's click the file up in the upper left corner here. Export as. I like to just let it go on its default. It's going to put it in my downloads folder. So click export, replace, and that's totally fine. And click export again. I don't like to deal with any of this partially because I don't know what it means, but also why bother? If it works, it works. So click export. Okay, let's go to your downloads folder and you should now have your circular logo right here. All right, so just to also once again prove that this is gonna be a circular logo, we can actually upload this to our Canva. Um, I'm gonna add a page here just really quickly. Let's click upload, upload files, click on my download. It happens to be called L just because of the lavender hooves. And there we go. So let's actually change this quickly to a purple, blue background, upload. And there you go, that is your logo. So you can put this logo on your YouTube channel, your Instagram page, your Discord server, anywhere that you want to put your logo, you now have a really nice, easy, and really recognizable logo for your club or your team. So I hope this video was helpful in order for you to create your very first logo for your club. If you cannot afford to commission an artist, or if you don't know how to find other artists uh, to even create a logo in the first place, it's really easy. It does take a little bit of time and a little bit of practice, but this is a way that you can create your very first logo. Emerald Hunters used one of these kind of logos for the first two years of its existence and it did very well. So as long as your logo is recognizable and easy to see and easy to read, that's all that's really important. So again, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.